Everybody's going on, everybody. Welcome back to another late night in the Brew Lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And tonight in the Brew Lab, I'm uh, coming at you with some best of one content, actually. Uh, just a brief detour from best of three, not because I want to stop doing that. I'm having way too much fun to do that. I've actually already cooked up two different brews for best of three that'll be coming out uh, Tuesday and Thursday next week. So stay tuned. Uh, but it's the weekend. I have a lot of friends and family over. We're going to be spending a lot of time on the beach and doing uh, weekend fun in the sun activities. And so I wanted to just have something light and breezy and fun, uh, which might even fit right into the serious jank category uh, to keep you guys entertained on this lovely Sunday. So, uh, like I said, don't worry. Best of three is still coming. Just a brief little weekend interlude with some fun and janky best of one. And so, without further ado, let's jump into tonight's brew simply called rebirth of the ripper and uh doing the thing i was doing in best of one before uh, i got into this best of three little trend uh which is revitalizing older cards that just stopped seeing play personally i think for no other reason than the fact that there's newer cards to play with in the format and people like playing new cards but Honestly, this whole little oil thing, and of course, any excuse to play the Forge, where do I sign? <laughs> but this whole oil little package with the Arc Fiend, Dross, Vat of Rebirth, Churning Reservoir, those of you who've been following me for a while will remember when I played this last, and we were just, we still had um, Fable of the Mirror Breaker in the format, and we were re re reanimating Atalis and Atraxas with Vat of Rebirth. For those of you who have forgotten this card or have never seen it before, you're welcome, first of all. So whenever another artifact or creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, so that, of course, includes treasures being sacrificed for mana. That includes Phyrexian horror tokens from your forge being sacrificed at the end of turn. Uh, you know, plenty, you know, any of your creatures dying, whatnot, your Vat of Rebirth gets an oil counter. And then when it has four or more, you can pay three, tap it, remove the four, and return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So we're going to be uh, having quite a few angles of attack, honestly. Uh, I, I, I'm a huge fan of this deck because it's it's really, there's a lot going on here, even though it doesn't Im immediately jump out at you. Just first things first, Arc Fiend, Vein Ripper together on the battlefield and you kill one of the opponent's creatures, that's like friggin' four, four drain from the opponent. So, you know, sometimes you just get both of these on the battlefield. You're playing against some little aggro deck with a bunch of weenies and you fire off a Brotherhood's end. It's just like, bam, 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 trigger, 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 trigger. Amazing. That's, that's just one thing I need to point out. Then, the Churning Reservoir puts oil counters on things at the beginning of your upkeep. So you can keep putting oil counters on the Arc Fiend. Then it's also got a little activated ability where you can pay two to create a little Phyrexian Goblin token, but you can only do that if a permanent lost an oil counter that turn. Since your Arc Fiend loses an oil counter at every upkeep, and then you just put one right back on it, so you don't risk the chance of losing to your Arc Fiend uh, losing all of its oil counters, uh, then um, you can make little chump blockers, which I've also found to be very handy against certain matchups. So there's that nice little synergy to point out. Then... Um, we have the fact that we can put oil counters with the training reservoir onto the Vat of Rebirth without even needing to sack treasure tokens or, uh, you know, have these uh, sacrifice themselves. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Then, you know, discard outlets are plentiful. We've got Bitter Triumph, Collector's Vault, and the Restless Vents, which is going to help us put Bane Ripper or Atali or Atraxa into the graveyard to then bring back with the Vat of Rebirth. Brotherhood's End's great against Boros Convoke. We got better triumph for the you know creatures or planeswalkers. And since we're always okay discarding stuff, it's totally fine to you know use that to pay for the additional cost instead of the life. Long Goodbye has been amazing as well. First time debuting on the channel. Haven't played this card yet until today. So uh, you know, testing out this new two mana black removal spell. It's phenomenal. Loving it. Um, yeah, that's really it. Nothing much more than that. I think uh, it's about time for us to jump into some games and see which angle of attack we end up winning with. You know, you swing in the air with a 6-6 six -six a few times, and that'll be the, do the trick. Throw in some forges, you can just win with a forge. Or 
maybe we go the full length of the game, bring back Bane Rippers and Atalis and do broken stuff over there. So I think that's enough of an introduction. Let's go right into some Mythic Rank best of one games and see how the deck holds up. And then, uh, as promised, Monday, or I believe I'm recording this, uh, it'll be coming out on like Sunday or Saturday, no, Saturday night late for my Americans, Sunday morning for the uh, Europeans. The point is most of you will you'll watch this on Sunday, so I hope you have a lovely Sunday, and then the next videos will be Tuesday and Thursday. Back to best of three, we've got some, uh, ooh. No interaction, but we do have a forge and lots of things to discard. Ah, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm really here to have some fun today more than anything. So let's let's just start off with the springs. Immediately give away the fact that we're in Rakdos to the opponent. Who looks like he's probably playing some Boros. Ah, forget I said anything. Cave deck? I love finally sinking back. Like when I was up in those higher mythic numbers, it's just all these tryhards. This is way more fun. Even for best of one. Alright. Probably take my forge. <laughs> Who the hell plays duress in a cave? Honestly. Red source, please, off the top. Let's go. Does look as though it's caves. So maybe it's that bat colony or something that they play. Having a small. <clears throat> Full on cave deck. All right. Bring it on. That's an Arc Fiend. And it's a number of caves. You know, a graveyard is three or greater. Wow. Man, like, been running into just the cool stuff again in Best of One. What did I miss? I mean, playing best of three too much. No, like, I mean, I, this is the first time I've played anyone running caves in I don't know how freaking long. Like, a very long time. Hey, one life. I can't man of any. Since I don't have any ways of putting oil on this again, I'm kind of okay with him killing it, honestly. We might just lose this match to Dross dying. Or, you know, running out of oil on the Dross, man. Because he's gained just enough life to put him outside of reach of us doing anything. And the fact that he, like, duressed away our freaking forge was really not cool. A lot of mana. They, they have this cave sweeper in red. Called like... Calamitous Haven or something. Oh! Okay, I mean... Surely you know about this in my hand. So... Not too worried, honestly. But again, kind of drawing the wrong end of our library. We would love to find... Either more mana or some of our ramp things, our bolts, our... Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Shuffler. Shuffler gets up to some serious nonsense more often than not. We're just going to get killed by a bunch of creature lands here. Quite possible. <sighs> 
Wow. Thanks, Arena client. <laughs> what you get when you... This is, this is a clear example of streamer's curse. Just like deck that hasn't been seen in months. You're not prepared for in any way, shape, or form. And you're bricking and you're not drawing any of the stuff you need to actually do anything relevant. Would love to just have a, you know, one of my removal spells here. Would be fantastic. But no, we're just going to take a bunch of damage. And have absolutely no way of dealing with it. That's going to be the game. I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure. He'll have a removal in hand for the Vein Ripper, and we'll just pull it. <clears throat> he can't kill it now, because he doesn't have anything to, to pay the ward, right? So there's that. But I think all he needs to do is keep swinging with his uh, creature lands, and we're dead. There we go. That's the sweeper I was talking about. And he's got just enough mana to get in with the other. We go to, uh, we go to six, and he swings in for six. Wow. Fantastic. Okay. Polite clap for the opponent playing something different. I'll never, ever freaking give anybody any crap about doing something unique. Like... Even if I'm losing, you know, if, if they brought up the, did you enjoy the match? Little stupid smiley face things, I would have clicked yes. Because it's not just the same old crap. Um, but fortunately, the meta does seem to be shifting. I'm running into a lot of that team of ramp stuff. Another deck. Oh my god. It's like the rotation didn't happen. So now we have cards in the same format that were never supposed to be there, like the new Capenna lands that, gain, you know, you go and find a basic, they gain your life, blah, blah, blah. They, those are not supposed to be in the same format as the, 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 it's like a, oh, there we go, that's better. It's like a three mana or two mana, that green guy, something analyst, I want to say, that brings back brings back all of your your lands when it and it's got this like pay for bring back all your lands okay this is looking like um life gain not yet it isn't that's surprising so definitely vault get that rumbling along and set up for it oh okay it's just this uh, Brotherhood's End is going to feel so good. Bye! Selesnia something or another? Mid-range? Sure. Yeah. Um, sure, I mean, who cares? We give the Lunark Veteran one extra uh, bit of life there. And then, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah! Okay. Just play a vein ripper next turn. I have no idea what's going on. Everybody's just decided that today is the day that we're going to play weird stuff that no one's expecting. I don't care. The uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the introduction is every time uh, your forge thingy dies, the, tri the, the ripper triggers, which is so nice. Make a treasure triggers the archivist. Nice. Again. Beautiful. Make sure we have enough mana for all of this. Sure. 
surely they have stuff to deal with the Ripper, right? I mean, it's not that difficult. Uh, now they've even got the, you know, they just need to sacrifice one of their creatures. I guess get lost or maybe uh, what's the other thing called. God, imagine we top deck Brotherhood's end now. Woo! Sure, you won't lose the Archivist, but everything else. Okay, now also the Warden. <laughs> but I'm st I'm not worried. I'm still not worried. Now we start using the the Vault. With full uh, advantage. Um, let's put this here. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Righty then. Okay, I'm going to put... Nah, actually, no. I'm just going to play out another ri Ripper. Still got a few turns before we can really worry. And then double Ripper on the board is just... Oh, 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 Jizzatronic. Amazing stuff. Maybe he also will make a little mistake and swing in with some... Uh, vents. Do you have Artifact 8? Ah, of course. Sure. That's no good. Forgot about the initiate. Double rippers. Let's go. Now, if I pay two to cycle this thing, I still get left with one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Ooh. Isn't that nice? I basically just got to play this game as if I didn't have any artifacts because of the initiates, unless I would just hurry up and draw like a damn sweeper. Urgh. Just one sweeper, man. It'd be so groovy. This thing's getting a bit too big. For my liking. But he's also. This costs. Okay, fine. No worries. Will you swing at my Goba can? That is the question. Do I care? Oof, scry's top. <gasps> You know what? Of course. We can just bring it back. Trigger happy. God, I love the Vein Ripper. The match. <gasps> Watch this. Do we have enough mana? Yes, we do. I mean, it's not quite as many things as I would have liked dying, but it's enough for us to win the game. 
Also because we can swing in the air now. Good game. Oh, that feels great. Pain repair is so sick, man. All right, all right. That was good. That felt good. Doing the thing. You know, it's not a full-on reanimator deck. That little package of the oil guys at the one drops are just there because, you know, it's nice to reanimate your vein rippers. But you could totally build this deck without that in there and just go more for the sacking stuff and whatnot. But I just, I love those cards, so I want to play them. And uh, I like when, when there's so many cross synergies. Fantastic. <laughs> one more land and good luck, dear opponent, getting around this crazy like the way the shuffler works you're so much more likely to like get a one of this bat is the worst man just bleh. yeah yeah take the brotherhood's end we all know you want to again just drawing all the top end none of our enablers that's freaking annoying here comes a glissa i would say Oh my god, I hate this bat so much. Just the worst. It's crazy how many times you play against bat decks and they have like four of them in the opening and just like so consistent. Yeah. Just a removal spell, please. We do have like a buttload of them, so it would be nice. That's fine. Comes the removal spell. And go for the throat. Coming right up. Maybe even Gix's command, no? Ooh. Do you have the go for You do not have the go for Yay! Uh, yeah. What the hell are you doing? Please. Don't mind if I do. What the, what the fudge? Did I miss something? What is this guy doing? Ah, he just had another glisser. That's very problematic because he gets rid of our counters with the Arc Fiend. So we just sort of have to... Whoa, ho, ho, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <gasps> Does he also have enough to turn on the, uh, you know, to... to... Okay. <sighs> you had to get the flyer in there. Okay, so uh, the man's land is not coming in this time. And also, he didn't just gain himself more. Um... Oh, God. Gix's command might just be what seals off fate there. Although, one more Brotherhood's end off the top might be really freaking sweet. That'll just win us the game outright, so let's see. Let's see if luck... Nope. Feature con... You... Uh, opponent controls dies. I'm 
Unfortunately, it's not enough. So close. Good game. Oh, Gari midrange. Still just fantastic. These bats really drive me up the wall. But it is what it is. How are we doing for time? Perfect. I want to play more with this deck. I really, really enjoy it. And we haven't quite yet done the mega thing. But we got close in that last match against Selesnya. That was pretty sweet. The double double vein rippers on online against the deck that can't do much against them felt pretty spectacular fingers crossed we get something a little bit more you know we get we don't keep just getting like that top end of our library i want i want the artifacts i want my vault there we go let's go <clears throat> this is much much better Let's get the vault down before we get our stuff counted. Finally, we get a good hand, and we're running into the much hated. Sure. He's probably just got uh, lock temporary lockdown. Yeah. Okay, well, if he uses temporary lockdown on his thrall, I don't think he would. So... That's pretty cool. <gasps> Here comes, uh... Brotherhood's End that I'm gonna be quite happy to, uh... Do. Frankly. However, that just opens us up to a lockdown if it is what he's going for. I think this is more of like a tempo deck when i see when i see this yeah fine Also fine. Cool. I'm so happy this isn't Sunfall dot deck. This is way more my speed. Cool. Still not enough to flip any of this stuff right now. And I get to bring back my uh, vampire man right now. One oil from this, plus sacking the treasure, is more than enough. On a spell of sorts? Oh, well. We got two vats. And if you play your own lockdowns, not only are you not going to hit the Ripper, you're getting rid of your own Gobba Can and stuff. So, I, I, again, um, I'm feeling pretty safe. We don't have to deal with lockdown. Heyo! Bane Ripper, you beauty. You are a thing of beauty, mate. I just uh, love that card. It is so freaking sweet. I think I'm gonna try to do something more sacrificey and not go too much into like anvils and stuff, but like go for the Obnixilis uh, and uh, Forge. Mm, you know, maybe not just go all the full like artifact sack stuff, but like the more traditional sack deck and uh, play the Vein Rippers. I I'm I'm completely in love with the card. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess so, maybe, yeah, sort of, why not, aha, I guess I should put in some of those of my own, eh, 
why not? I've got a full playset. That could be a good idea, actually. Huh, speak of the devil. The trample here is going to be fantastic. And, you know, we're both playing that deck where Brotherhood Zen is the only artifact that we have. Unless he's playing a Braid, which... Double Anvil into thing that makes... Ah! Not quite yet. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Let's go. I'm not attacking. I don't want to give him treasures yet. I'm okay not attacking. I guess there's a, there's that like village rights that makes a map. Triple anvil. Okay, if he f if I find a Brotherhood Zen, I will use it. Even if it kills my own forge. That is uh, an interesting choice, my friend. Now I'm definitely just dying for a Brotherhood's End. Like, whoo! Man, you could have used that on my on my forge, dude. <gasps> yes, yes. Watch this. gonna be how much life it's already two down and he can sack two of these so we'll probably just get one two three four triggers Oh, wait. Of course. Doesn't matter how they die. Oh, you beautiful little creature. Oh. That's just the game right there. Get stuffed, mate. Triple anvil. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> 33 minutes in. Probably got time for two more. Then I gotta go and spend some time with my kiddos. It's a beach day. The sun is shining. The weather is so sweet. <clears throat> no work stuff on the phone. Boss, a little summon, summon. It's a really nice hand, a little, little short on mana. But that's okay. Go. Ask and you shall receive. Discard a forge, honestly. It's pretty slow against Mono Red. Love Park here. Always happy to see people playing it. Alright, uh, we've got Brotherhood's End. Let's get a forge rolling. We've also got a bit of triumph for the 
find Thundermore if he, I don't know, he could just play like a land into Nahiri's uh, Majigi Mabobby. Nah Nahiri Majig. I think what I really want now is something that I can happily discard. Ooh. And it's a little short on lands. That makes me very happy. I kind of want you to spend your turn like finding a way to desperately flip the invasion, and then I'll just remove it. And then we've got the follow-up Brotherhood Zen for all of these little wieners. That that's oh, what? Is that a misplay? Are you supposed to do that, or what? What's going on here? I mean, you could have just put a roll token there. Fine. Sweet ass. Okay. So, what? I think we kind of, uh, ooh. Not ideal. Definitely not ideal. Where's my vein rippers? Where's my big stuff? I need I need a dross man. I need some some things. Mono red. <gasps> okay. Okay. Great. Oh, just great. As well. We've even got a thing to discard to a bit of triumph. And we you know, we win next turn. Uh, Forge just showing how sure the opponent bricked and whatever, but you know, you can just win with the Forge. You don't even need to do any of the other other nonsense. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Bye bye, Mono Redzies. Nice to see people playing uh, talk here. Love talk here. <clears throat> 38 minutes in. I think we can call it a night. Uh, like I started this video with, it's a little uh, short and cheerful, slightly jankier thing. Trying to show how this oil stuff from um, uh, All Will Be One is actually still really, really cool to play. And uh, we got... A few of the good alternate win cons off there. We won with the Forge. We won with an Arc Fiend of the Dross Brotherhood's End thingy. We won with the Vein Ripper. We did not get to play a Traxa or a Taliu off of a Vat, but we did reanimate something with a Vat. I think overall, we definitely got to see what the deck is capable of. I think maybe the only other thing I could think of is like cutting a, uh, a Springs or two or something and bringing in the, um, the Rakdos Surveil Land called something theater really sweet art on it where is it yeah the raucous theater <laughs> such a cool name that that might be something we could consider adding to the mana base otherwise as, as far as like the core beauty and you know if you wanted to you could like maybe not play the rippers but i don't see why you wouldn't want to or maybe just cut them by like one or two and put in more of these like you know go something like that Got more into the reanimation strategy, but like you saw, there's some matches where you just never find your VAT. Or you find your VAT, you get ready to fire it off, and then your opponent just temporary lockdown gets rid of all of your little cheap artifacts. So I thought, you know, considering we can actually just hard cast Vein Ripper, this is the better split. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. But that is going to have to be it for this one, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be seeing you all in the next one with another fresh, fresh, best of three brew. And until then, this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab signing out. Peace, y'all.